Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. And it never ends because you still want to rock, don't you, D? I, you know what? I was just in my head, the fade ending. You know, choosing the fade over the hard ending, like, is the idea, and I'm trying to think, what's the idea of the fade, that it, it goes on forever? Like, you're rocking forever. Well, you, Somewhere, well, D. Snyder is rocking of forever. Course. Well, you know, the, the point, when you're in the studio, you don't fade. You stop. <laughs> no, so well, you, you, ha- you make a conscious decision to do the fade. Uh, yeah, well, uh, but they, you know you're going to fade. So they say, just keep going for a while. And then you're in there, rock, 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 rock. And you're like looking, and you're looking, at, is anybody like, are they in there? When are they going to tell me to stop? Because this is going on like a half hour. Was this canned heat? You know, I mean, it's just, you know, and the people who know canned heat know what I'm going talking about. Going up the country. Yeah, exactly. Or the boogie, the canned heat boogie, one side of an album. Oh, yeah. You know, so, and then you go, okay, stop. Dude, how long does this fade? Nah, it's only about 30 se- 20 seconds, you know, like, damn. <laughs> the fade ended. Uh, but it, it, a big hit. Yeah, that worked out well. As my, as my manager Phil Carson says, if you're only going to have two hits, make them doozies. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling I was telling a friend of mine the other night just about you know the eclectic musical taste that you have, and yeah, and, and how well kept secret, and how in, and how impressive. It is that you appreciate so many different genres. You, of course, are known as kind of a hard rock guy, you know. But hey, you can you can you can do Broadway show tunes with the best of them. Yes, but you know, it's fun. I, I, I've, I'm reflecting on my life a lot lately, and I said, you know, a lot of these things that I have done since the '80s, since I was, you know, pure metal, and uh, I said, you know, and I, if you had told me in my 20s I was going to have Celine Dion sing a Christmas song I wrote for my wife. I probably would have gotten in a fight with you. I probably would have said, "Take it back, man! I'm metal." <laughs> You're gonna you, one day you will be on Broadway. Take it back! I mean, because I was so I, I was like so you know, like focused back in the '80s and '70s. Yeah, I've done a lot of weird things now. And you have a D. You're gonna have a toy you'll be signing at a, at a convention. It's gonna be a little little plastic doll of you. I'll take it back. <laughs> I'll never sign it. Well, <laughs> I'll never give. I'll never give permission. So, so what are you gonna do at Comic Con? So Funko. Um, has made a Funko Pop. If people know the Funko Pops, is a D. Snyder Twisted Sister Funko Pop. So I'm signing those today, and I'm signing. Uh, there's a new graphic novel yeah, on Z2. Not take it. He's not going to take it, which is about not just going to Washington in the 80s to testify and the censorship thing, but they wanted to explore how I got there. And uh, the writers, I mean, they did a lengthy. It was almost like a therapy session. Figured out. <laughs> And I didn't realize it, that basically I was being told to shut up my entire life. And finally I got tired. And when I finally stopped shutting up, I never shut up. Well, you know, I was there, D. Yeah. I was, you know, part of the whole thing that was going on. And and your uh, testimony uh, in Washington before Congress was probably the turning point in that whole battle with the uh, uh, PMRC uh, and... And Recap it for those who were not yet here. Yes, for, for those of you who weren't born yet, in uh, 1980, well, it started probably 84, um, some senators uh, and politicians' wives formed the PMRC. And for those of you out there who want to say it was a, a right-wing agenda or a left-wing agenda, this was a Reagan era, and it was probably the only thing both sides could agree on censoring rock and roll. Yeah, the head, the, head of the, the, the most prominent of the congressional wives was Tipper Gore. Right. Yes, who was Democrat, but Susan uh, Brown was the Treasury Secretary, who, Republican's wife, and you know, and the panel that was the Rockefellers and the Exxons and the Hawkins and the uh, Danforth, they were Republican, Democrat, and they, they wanted to censor rock and roll. That nice little label you got, warning, parental advisory, when you see it, that was a result of those hearings. They wanted something much more draconian. Uh, they wanted to put like, O oh, for a cult, B for bondage, V for violence. They, they had a crazy agenda. But me, Frank Zappa, and John Denver, um, God bless, rest both their souls, we went in, we testified, and um, it was a pretty historic but event. They were, yeah, but they were going after you 
specifically as the bad you devil evil worshiping guy. well i was on the filthy 15 and, and it was a list and, yeah. and and you and you just shut them down yeah uh, it, yeah they, they were surprised they didn't vet me very well uh they just looked at my pictures and said oh this guy will be fun and uh it turns out you know if they had taken a moment to think to, to look and say oh wait a minute he doesn't drink he doesn't get high we don't want this guy we he's married what not this guy we want vince neal what what, what who's <laughs> Yes. Wow. <laughs> Why did we get him? <laughs> but you were awesome. I mean, Thank you. you were just awesome. And and they were, you know, I mean, you were, you people can go and see their recordings, video right. of, of this whole thing. You know, very, as still happens in many congressional hearings, smarmy questions. Oh, yeah. You know, that just so dripping with mm-hmm. condescension and, 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 there in front of them was an intelligent, well-spoken, uh, artistic family man. Wait Wearing snakeskin boots and now. jeans so tight you could tell he was circumcised. Yeah. Yeah. D. Snyder, yeah. Speaker of the House. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't you know, wish that job on anybody. Let me tell you. I, what do you think, I get, uh, No, no, no. <laughs> I, I get asked a lot to enter the realm of politics because if people think I'm sort of a voice of reason. Right. And uh, to the point where one group, it was uh, tied to the Lincoln Project, actually, called me up and they said, not taking no for an answer. We've already started the Super PAC. You're running. Uh, And I don't know. I didn't even say for what. I said, guys, it's flattering that you're working that hard. But I've seen the job. And it's awful. Those people are not. They're awful people. Uh, And that's across the board. They're there. I'm sure some people get in there with hopes of making a change. But by the they get tainted, and it's all about their personal agendas and pleasing their their financiers more than their constituents. You know, so I I, I don't want the job. No, thank I you. I really want besides, a D. Snyder bumper sticker. Besides, you've got a really great job. <laughs> yeah, I've got an excellent job. I, I basically semi-retired, and uh, I get to hang out on the beach a lot. And uh, and now I just sort of do whatever I want to do. Uh, and I don't perform anymore except go out and like I'm going to join Brett Michaels in Arizona for a few songs and then you know go back to the beach. And you're going to be signing yes. copies of He's Not Going to Take It, which is the graphic uh, publication at New York City Comic Con today. Today, yeah. So all weekend I'm signing copies of, uh, of uh, the Funko Pops at the Funko booth. This is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Today only I was uh, doing a stint at the Z2 booth signing copies of He's Not Going to Take It. And then over the weekend, I'm going out to the Long Island <clears throat> Music Hall of Fame to sign copies of my novel, Frat, Saturday Night. Right. And, and yes. on, on the cover here, I see these... Uh, paddles with the holes drilled in them. Now, um, frats, you know, fraternities, and I guess this is some sort of hazing symbol you've got here. But yes. When, but when I saw the paddles with the holes drilled in them, it reminded me of junior high school because that's what we got paddled with by the teachers or the assistant principal were big wooden paddles Whoa. with holes drilled through them. Whoa. In public school? Yes, in what public school. What did you school. do? You paddled in public school? Yes, of course. Where did you grow up? In, in <laughs> Michigan. Oh, right. Michigan. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to do that. They're still doing that. They didn't paddle the girls. They only paddled the boys. The gym teacher, the shop teacher, and the assistant principal were in charge Wait, of paddling. Wait, tell D how you were forced to swim naked. Oh, and we had to swim naked, too. Hey, JJ, my guitar player JJ from Twisted, JJ French, he grew up in uh, in Manhattan, and he went to G- he went to school in Manhattan, and they swam naked as well. Yeah, yeah. He said it was really well, was it intimidating a with school? a lot of the uh, African-American swam kids. Naked too. But that was the Catholic school. <laughs> yeah. We had to shower. And my, my growing is just you had to take a shower after gym. Right. And it was like, you know, every dude in there nude in the, in the shower. No and privacy. Yeah, and then the mean guys with the wet towels would yeah, come yeah, yeah. And zap you right where it hurt. Yeah. Ah. You crazy kids with your pools. Uh, and speaking of toxic masculinity <laughs> in high school, that's what your book is about. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that until the editor said, this is about toxic masculinity. I said, ooh, a catchphrase. Great. Because I just wrote a book. I, I grew up in Long Island where we had high school fraternities. And I thought that was the way of the world because that was the world I grew up in. 
you know, just sort of, okay, stay away from that street because that's where that frat hangs right. out and, and watch out for those guys. And, you know, and you sort of just sort of a minefield. And they were the fraternities, by the way, they, they, they have charters with the police. They, they used to march in the parades, Memorial Day. They'd be marching, but they were just gangs uh, in high school. <laughs> it wasn't no beer pong people. It was just fighting. <laughs> and um, when I started traveling, I found out this was a unique the uh, ex- thing that happened in a South Shore, Long Island, Nassau County, specifically about five towns that had these high school but fraternities. But not the five towns. Not the five towns. No, no. that was too. <laughs> the noses were high, too high in the air for a frat. <laughs> but uh, so I told the story, and it was, and so it's based on actual events. And I've been writing, guys. I'm telling the audience this for over 35 years now. I, I'm I'm a capable writer. I promise you, it's readable, and I give you my money back guarantee. <laughs> If you get a copy of Frats and you do not like it, you see me on the streets. You might. You might see me on Long Island. I just walk up and say, D, I didn't really enjoy the book. I will reach my pocket and give you your money back. Wow. That's a promise. Wow. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Uh, even uh, This is the best review I got. My wife said, it's actually good. <laughs> and this is- I said, begrudgingly. This begrudgingly. Is- After 47 years, she goes, yeah, it's actually good. Now, this is from Red <laughs> Penguin Books. They're the yes. publisher. And where are you going to be for your book signing? I'm going to the Long Island Music Hall of Fame. Uh, I hear they some call it the Twisted Sister Hall of Fame <laughs> because there's so much Twisted Sister memorabilia in there. Uh, it's in Stony Brook. And uh, I'm finally going to get to see it before they actually, the theme on this, this season is the, the club scene. You know, sort of so a lot of, they got like 15 of my wife's costumes that I wore. Uh, back in the day in the bars because she made all the costumes. I'll bet they still fit. Um, well, some of them, I've worn some of them fairly recently, actually, you know, and for different reasons. You know, D you know, could sexual. do you know, a Lenny sexual. Kravitz. <laughs> D could do a Lenny Kravitz video. Lenny Did you Kravitz see the video? video? He's completely naked. You see almost okay. everything. Okay. As I you said to my manager, that. stop telling people I've got a six pack. Okay, Chris? <laughs> when I retired for Twisted Sister, I announced to the audience, I said, Listen, why am I retiring? I want a pancake. <laughs> I want a muffin. Carbs. I want a carb. Carb. <laughs> I said, I want a, I've been, I'm, I'm shredded. Yes, I'm 62 years old. I'm done being shredded. So, no, I couldn't do, I couldn't do a nude. Okay. So, so Lenny, it's all you, bro. Okay. but so, Hey, Pat, I'll just let quick Lenny Kravitz for you guys. Yeah. Okay. And the audience will enjoy this, too. I was, you know, I did morning radio for a few years. So, I'm interviewing Lenny. And we're talking. And all of a sudden, the acoustics got very sort of echoey. And he's talking to me. I said, Lenny, are you going to the bathroom? And Lenny's like, uh, I had to go. <laughs> oh, so he was on, it was a phone hey, interview. So, so I'm like, <laughs> dude, I don't know how I feel about you holding your penis while we're speaking. <laughs> That's the only thing we don't see. <laughs> right. That's the only thing, Dave. Dave, you're closer than we can. Okay, but yeah. now, what... Me and Lemmy are... Now, now let's go <laughs> to... Lemmy. Lenny, uh, our dealings with him were always very pleasant. <laughs> no, Crowley. it was great. It was a great interview, right. but I just, just got I, weird. I, now, I want to get this through because we're all laughing so much and having such a good time. Yes, thank you. Thank what you, What time and what day in Stony Brook on Long Island? That's a good one, because I head from, at 10 o'clock, I start over at um, the, the Comic-Con, over at the, um, over at the Funko booth, and then go over to Z2 a little later, and I'm doing a panel thing. Tomorrow, I think it's uh, 6 to 8. Two hours uh, in Stony Brook at the Long Island Music Hall of Fame, signing copies of Frats, <coughs> Frats while I'm here. And, um, yeah, so I'm doing that. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, is that is, enough? There's no, always something no, to is, talk about. Yeah, but no, this is the shameless plug. This we can talk about the world. Yeah, This I, is the final shameless I, I, plug. Look, Anything I said to you guys before, and the this stuff I do Dion now. Christmas album. Yes. <laughs> my Rock of Vodka, Vodka, my coffee brand, we have For the Love of Coffee, that's available through Dead Slade Coffee. Uh, it's excellent. I, 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 it's a Guatemalan blend oh, wow. that I chose. I, I love Guatemalan blend. Oh, ooh. The Rock of Vodka, Vodka. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's award first, winning. It's the first bottle we popped in our new studio. Yeah, it's Maybe. award winning. Yeah, and I endorsed it, and uh, it's made in Spain. So everybody's like, you know, yo, F Russia. You know, well, it's it's from Madrid, and it's it's a fantastic vodka for those of you who like vodka. Okay, 
and it's imported by Rockavaca Spirits, Manhasset, New York. Yeah, that's right. I'm just signing bottles there, too. All I do is sign things now. <laughs> Be- babies, everything. All right, and Comic-Con today. Comic-Con today uh, and tomorrow right. and Sunday. All right. Uh, Dee Snyder with us. We're about to say goodbye, but, you know, Dee, you're making a rock and roll song. I bet it never occurred to you in the studio that you were creating something anthemic that would be used by so many people all over the world to express their feelings through your own creation. That's the part I didn't expect. Okay, so yes, of course I wrote, I was writing an anthem very deliberately. I wanted uh, you know, something that people would rally, use as a rallying cry. Um, and I deliberately, deliberately was very vague about um, the, you know, well, what are you not taking? Right. As a matter of fact, I believe it was the Village Voice review of Twisted Sisters. We're not going to take it. Three words. What from whom? <laughs> and then a big blank space before the next review. <laughs> that was it. What from whom? And I'm screaming, that's the point. The point was, this is a smoke on the water, man. I'm not telling you about Funky Claude, who I met, by the way. He's a dude. I said, Dean, this is Funky Claude. I said, was running in and out, pulling <laughs> kids from the gr- on the ground. Yeah. yeah, that was him. Anyway, but I said this isn't a. This, I want to be general so people could put their situation. Now, mind you, you know, I was thinking about my dad, my bosses, my teachers, ex girlfriends, you know, things like that. It, and because it's so general, it has become a, a battle cry for every cause and every side. So I've got all the way on the left singing it and all the way on the right is singing it and everybody, and now it's almost a folk song at this point where it's just transcended the genre, the band, and you know, and that's incredible. I, I never expected that. All right. Well, D. Snyder, what we always expect is what we always get when you visit us, which is a great time. Yes, and we love it. It's the tea. coffee. We're always happy. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's always the dough. We're always happy to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you so much, D. It. Snyder, you, here at Q104.3. New York's classic rock, Q104.3.